And so it was with me, brothers and sisters, when I came to you. I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness, with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. So maybe you don't pick up very quickly that we're talking about dependence here, but it's a clear example of um, what dependence actually on the Holy Spirit looks like in the life of a human being, of a person, and in this case it's Paul. So dependence, if you look it up in the dictionary, you will find that um, it means the state of relying on or being controlled by someone or something else. In the light of that, let's pray and let's ask the Holy Spirit to lead us into understanding. Father, we thank you for this moment. Thank you for your plans for, for this very moment for our lives, Lord. And thank you that you, through your words, edify our spirits, our inner person, Lord Jesus, to become the, the person and the church you're calling us to be. I pray that you will just water the seed of your words in our hearts today so we can bear fruit, the fruit of your life in this world, in Jesus' name. Amen. So we said dependence. The state of relying on someone or something else. The state of being controlled by someone or something else. So we have these two sides, and it seems like it is a two-way road, isn't it? Um, the state of relying, this is from the person one to person two. And then the state of being controlled, that's person, person two to person one, isn't it? Um, Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 5 says, in, this is a New Living Translation, you might have a different there, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. I'll say it again. In your Bibles it says, in accordance with the Holy Spirit. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. That's quite curious, isn't it? The word control there, when control is about dependence. So, just to portray it in a very real kind of life, uh, way, in, in our lives, how it looks like. So, when do we in our lives experience this dependence thing? Um, you all know that since we've, we've been born, yes, we've depended, we, we, we've depended on our mother's nutrition, while we developed in our mother's womb. So it seems like dependence has been with us since we came to this world. So unconsciously, we kind of uh, grew in our mother's womb, then we were born, and then this dependence thing, it was always there, whether we were conscious of it or not. So while we were young, dependence was something necessary, wasn't it? You needed to depend on your parents or tutors, whoever raised you. Um, we needed to depend on institution, school, uh, church, structure. You know, wh while you're young, you need to depend on things that you can see, that you can trust. But as we grow to adulthood, as we grow to independence, if it were, we start shifting uh, that dependence from the things we formerly depended on to other things because that's how we were made. And actually, if you look at it in the context of creation, you know, the same for a seed. It needs, you know, for the soil, it needs the water so it can grow. But then what happens when life just bursts and things change? And um, what happens when we shift dependence from the necessary things to actually other things. And we'll see how that looks like. So it can be a blessing in the, in the context of our young years, when we need to depend on what God provides actually for us. But then dependence 
in the context then of adulthood, when we're adults and independent from those things, why is it so often a curse, not a blessing? Why is it so often something that leads us astray? Why? So people, um, and we all found ourselves there in one way or the other, people depending on people, people depending on uh, relationships, on money, governments, movements, political parties, drugs, alcohol, food, religion, strictly speaking. And pe people and us all get very little from, from those things compared to what we lose in depending actually on it. Because these things, you know, we could compare um, this dependence with a roller coaster. When these things go up, you ride along. And if you depend on them, then when they go down, you go down with them. Your mood, your spiritual life, everything you are engages with that thing, that person um, you depend on. So dependence comes in many different forms. And when we depend on something, consciously, unconsciously, we think that without that thing, we cannot survive. We depend on that thing. Uh, we think we need that thing to survive. We place value on it. So emotionally, physically, spiritually even sometimes. And I'm, saying, I'm not saying we don't need people to survive. I'm, I don't say we don't need certain things to actually have a good life. But how do we relate to people and things? What's our relationship with them? And what, uh, what do we do to get those things? How, how do we manage to... What's our approach? How do we relate to these things? So, I found that the best, one of the best ways for the enemy to keep us away from the source of every good thing who's God, one of the best ways is to offer substitutes, if it were. Let me explain. So, God created us for himself, God created you for himself with a purpose, reason why he gave you gifts, talents, yes? He equipped you for this very moment in history, today, to be sitting there where you're sitting, it's not by chance, and listening to this. God's plan. Um, even if you were drugged here by a friend, <laughs> that was God's plan, that you were here. So, God created us to live in his very presence with nothing to be scared about, nothing to hide, to enjoy him, for him to enjoy us. God was to be our obvious choice if we were to be presented to a second choice. But let's go back in history. Adam messed up. Yeah. Death came to the world. God sends the second Adam, Jesus Christ, to bring us back to him, to restore the connection, the relationship, for us to be able to enjoy God and he, him to, he to enjoy us again. But this time, it's different because it's with a purpose alongside that. Different than just standing in the garden. Uh, this time in the midst of a world in complete mess, as we saw in, you know, in the video, in a world in complete mess. For us to be that much needed light. So, God decided that once Jesus would raise to glory, he would send his spirit to live in us so he, um, we could have that connection back and continue to live the life he intended for us to live from the very beginning, a life in his presence. So substitutes. Uh, but for what? Whatever serves the enemy, uh, the purpose of keeping you away from relating to God and to living your life in the power of the Spirit and from choosing God. So whatever thing, and this is kind of an advert, yeah? He's very, he's very sneaky. So is it love you're after? That's the big need in your heart. Quick fix, depend emotionally on whoever, whatever. Give yourself for nothing to anyone and everyone and you will have that. 
All that you need, quick fix. Is it peace you're after? No problem. You can have money, safety, acceptance in the package of human adulation, a promotion, quick fix. Is it joy that you need so much? Freedom. There are many little things, shiny, variety of colors and prizes to give you just that. So the enemy can be compared to a good salesman, yeah? He's been offering substitutes to the world constantly since he fell. Most importantly, he's been pushing these substitutes to the people of God, to us. The plan, I said this last week, and it continues to be so. He distracts, he attacks, he weakens, then offers substitutes. And when you're too confused to discern, you choose to just survive the day. You choose the fix, and eventually you find yourself in the midst of a life that you don't relate to, that you didn't want. You find yourself maybe even cursing your life, your future, and God for the results of those choices. You become disillusioned and you blame God and you're angry and confused, too blind to see what the truth actually is of the situation. And maybe you even resent God because with your eyes you see, you know, people around you living out of their own substitutes every single day. They enjoy it. And you may think that the people of God who remain planted in Jesus are fools for patiently waiting and trusting in God, thinking that, well, this is just unfair. But the only truth is that the, pers that the only person that can give you all that that you're looking for, and I mean everything, and I will tell you how, is the Holy Spirit. When you receive from the Holy Spirit, you receive much more abundantly of that which you ask for when you surrender in love and trust, every bit of your life, the good, the bad, the past, the present, the future, to your creator, every single thing. So when you are offered substitutes for dependence every day, guard your heart. Because your value is not what you think it is, your value is compared to how far God went to bring you back to himself. Jesus Christ died as a human being with none of the glory he once had. God turned his back on him so he could have you back. So how important you think you are, your value, even your value as a person depends on God's heart, God's very heart. So depending on God, getting it right. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 15 and 16 says, The spiritual man makes judgments about all things. And he continues, continues to say, We have the mind of Christ. So I want to encourage you, depend on, seek, love your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength. Start experiencing his power in your everyday life. Not just when you come on Sundays. It's great today. We've, we have freedom to enjoy his presence here. But the real, uh, you know, contrast is when we go out there. We're, we're in our jobs. And, you know, you know Marty and me. And this is the first time ever that we actually work for church. We've always worked, like, in other jobs, in other realms, in other places. And uh, th there's where these things count where the challenge is for us to choose right. So I want to encourage you, because God's faithful. I want to encourage you to wait on his promises, to take courage, to seek for his, first his kingdom, and you'll be far, far from falling for substitutes. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Everything that your heart burns for will be added unto you when you seek his kingdom first, when you seek him first, when you depend on him. And it's really interesting for me to see that these things that we want, the desire of our hearts, whatever it is, 
you, you, you want to have a partner, you want to uh, you know, experience financial freedom, whatever it is that burns in your heart, it's not a bad thing at all. It's a good thing. God wants to bless you in those areas, but are you depending on that thing to make you happy? Are you depending on that very thing to set you free, to give you that thing you look for? Happiness, joy, peace. Seek his kingdom first. He's faithful. He will bring much more abundantly to your life than you, you've even imagined. So don't strive for success in this world. It's costly to the soul. It's costly. Seek your God every day. Constantly love him and worship him. Step in the life he created for you to have. In the power of his spirit. Don't be afraid. For he is faithful. He rewards those who diligently seek him. Let your faith rest in his power. Let your faith rest in his power. That's the dependence we are talking about. First Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 14 says, The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. I will read it again. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirits of God, for they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. So depend on his spirit and you will have the abundant life you want to have, you want to live. There's nothing better. And actually, I can tell you, he surprises you with better, greater things. Not with the one bit. What he does is integral. He does Everything you need. Um, I would say you don't even depend on, on your expectations of how things should look like in your life today. Don't dwell in the past. Give God your present. Give God your future. Depend on him. He's faithful. He will show you his power and love. I will read again 1 Corinthians 2 from 1 to 5 in the light of what we discussed. And it says, And so it was with me, says Paul, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom. He's saying I didn't come depending on my qualifications and skills, which he had. As I proclaimed to you the testimony about God, for I resolved, decided, he chose to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness, surrendered, vulnerable, with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, which he could have used, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. We can do nothing that's actually substantial for the kingdom, kingdom of God without depending on the Holy Spirit. So I invite you to close your eyes now and where you are, um, would you just in an act of, of honesty, just put a hand on your heart, just surrender everything, including your life again to the Lord. Do it like honestly. Use your faith tonight and give it all to, lo to the Lord. Give it all to God. It's an opportunity to uh, just expect His Spirit to come through in every single area of your life as you decide to depend on His power, on His Spirit. I would like you to remain with your eyes closed. So if you're sitting there craving for God's Spirit to fill you up, if you've been waiting for long for something to, to just come to your life that would cheer you up or give you 
happiness or peace or a sense of purpose. Why don't you raise your hand so we can uh, pray and intercede for you. No one will see you, don't worry. But if you crave for God's Spirit, if, if you really want to live a life of dependence on Him, Please repeat this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge you abide in me by your Spirit. Father, thank you for this irrevocable gift. Holy Spirit, teach me, lead me, guide me in everything. I give you my life today and everything in it. The good, the bad, the past, my present, my future. I choose to depend on you from now on. Father, we thank you that you hold our life and future in your hands. Thank you that we lack nothing because we have you. Thank you that nothing can compare to the experience of you, Spirit of God. Be our love, be our joy, be our peace. We welcome you in our lives. Now, tomorrow, and forever. In Jesus' name, amen.